Hey community, we're back and I'm Brandy B, the community MP. And I'm Brandy G, the community MP. And together we are B&B, the community, community MPs. Today's topic is on sickle cell disease. Yes. Explain to them what sickle cell disease is All right. in general. So sickle cell disease is a group of inherited red blood cell mm -hmm. disorders okay so we all what's have me what's what's inherited it comes from your mom or your daddy okay basically you get it from your mom you get it from your daddy okay okay so we all okay okay <laughs> okay all right okay. <laughs> so we all have red blood cells in our bodies brandy so tell us what the red blood cells do in your body so a normal red blood oh, cell. normal red blood cell carries oxygen from one it carries Oxygen from one place to the other in the okay. body. So it basically oxygenates the body's organs. Okay, so like you said, so it's a normal red blood cells usually round, mm -hmm. and it carries oxygen to other parts of your body, to so yes. your vital organs, right? Yep. So with sickle cell disease, the red blood cell is not round. Mm -hmm. It's like a C-shaped, mm -hmm. sticky red blood cell. So therefore, those red blood cells that irregular red blood cell mm -hmm. is used to carry oxygen to those parts of the body also. But with those type of cells, what happens is because they're C-shaped, mm -hmm. sometimes they get stuck yeah. in places. They can't mm -hmm. move like the regular round yeah. red blood get, cells move. They get, even get stuck on themselves. Yes. Yeah. And also, those red blood cells die earlier. They don't live as long as a normal red blood cell. Yeah. So therefore, when they don't live as normal as a, they don't live as long as a normal red blood cell, they can't carry as much oxygen right, to yeah. other parts of your body, which causes the complications with sickle cell disease. Yes. Okay, yeah. it's a lot. It is. But <laughs> basically, that's what it is. Yeah. And that makes sense. Okay. So sickle cell disease affects approximately a hundred thousand Americans. Mm -hmm. It occurs in like one out of every three hundred and sixty-five black or African-American um, birth. And then the next, I guess, um, the next race that it affects the most is Hispanics, but it only happens in one out of 16,000. Okay. So that's a big gap. It you know, is. it's like one in every 300 versus, yeah. versus one in every 16,000. That is a big gap. Um, but about one in 13 black or African-American babies is born with a sickle cell trait okay. and we'll talk about the trait later but um i guess i guess it depends so you can get the disease or you can get the trait, trait. Yeah. okay okay so there are several different types of sickle cell anemia um, several yes several different types of the mm -hmm. disease okay the disease severity depends on the type that you get so and that is determined by like what gene you get from wh which parent okay so there it is too complex really to go into detail about but so some the some of the uh, types are more severe than others okay 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 so let's talk about the trait okay. so the, the trait is you're getting a bad sickle cell gene from mm -hmm. one parent and you're getting a good gene from another parent right. which gives the person the sickle cell trait so the trait doesn't mean that you have sickle cell disease, correct? correct. That's correct. Okay. And you probably don't have any symptoms. Okay. But can you pass the trait on to your kid? You can pass the trait on to your kid and then say your kid has uh, a baby with somebody else that has a trait and then they can form, their kids can end up with sickle cell disease. Okay. Okay. Does that okay. make sense? That makes sense. Okay. okay. Oh, thank you for explaining to me, Miranda. Okay. <laughs> So, how do we diagnose sickle cell disease? Um, it's diagnosed through blood work. Uh, usually, what is it? The um, electrophoresis. Hemoglobin. Yeah, electro hemoglobin. hemoglobin electrophoresis. Okay, okay. So, routine blood work. And then if they suspect it, then they'll just do a little bit of extra work. Okay, well, so what if um, I, yeah, so if, what if I know that I have um, the trait and I just want my doctor to see if my baby going to... It so it can usually they test for it whenever you're whenever you have your baby. So the baby goes through routine testing and then that's included, okay. especially if you're African American. And then um, you it, say you want to know before you have the baby. Then they can do like DNA testing okay. to see. Okay. Okay. So you, okay. not not while you're pregnant they can do it. Not before you get pregnant because otherwise you wouldn't be able to determine okay. what the baby has if the baby isn't actually <laughs> formed yet. Does that make sense? Oh, yes, yeah. it does. So tell me this. 
how can I get it? Like, so me living in housing development puts me at risk for getting sickle cell disease? No, you can only, it's inherited. Okay. And you know, that means it comes from your parents. I'm just asking. Yeah. All right. I just want to know. I know you want to know. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. So there's different signs and symptoms of um, sickle cell disease that mm -hmm. you may experience. And some are severe, and some are mild. And not everybody experiences the same things. Okay. Okay. So you may you may have a you may have a mild form of sickle cell disease versus somebody that has a severe form. So your symptoms might be different. Okay. And also, I read that it can occur early in life, like yes. the first years of life. Yeah. I'm um, up to five. I think it was five months. Five mo around the age of five, five months, months is when they usually start to first develop symptoms. symptoms. Okay, yeah. so let's talk about some of the symptoms. It's a lot of symptoms. Lots of symptoms. All right, so one of the symptoms is hand foot syndrome swelling. So that's mm -hmm. when your hand and your feet swell. Mm -hmm. and you, the kid may also have fever. So why is the hand and the feet swelling, Brandy? That's why I have to ask myself to, to make this make yeah. sense. So remember, the cells are sickle, so they're just they, clumping up. Clumping up. So that means that blood can't flow like it should to my hands and my feet. So which may cause pain in my hands and my feet and swelling in my hands and my feet. Yes. Okay? That makes sense? It does. All right. Yeah. Okay. So right. And, and basically the treatment for that is pain medicine and or, fluids. Yeah. Why fluids? Because once you if you consume more fluids then the blood cells are more dilute and, and they can, can they move can around. Do, they can do their thing better. Okay. Yeah. All right. So that's that's a good explanation. And then of course pain, which is what most people associate sickle cell disease with. Okay. Is because those people are in severe pain. So when they have that pain, they usually call it something. A crisis. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, um, and that usually they go to the ER. That's the most common reason they go to the ER for treatment. Treat it with pain medication. And I'm just gonna say this because I know that there's racism in in healthcare, and I feel like with this disease being, um, it predominantly affects African Americans, the and people of color, and yeah, yeah. yeah. um, Hispanics. As well, but a lot, like we said, yeah. one in 365. Yeah. yeah, versus one in 16,000. Yes. But anyways, um, it, it, I feel like their pain, a lot of times their pain gets downplayed as they're just drug seeking and then people aren't treated, you know, they are, uh, they're under treated. Yes. And so they live with this pain and then they resort to doing other mm -hmm. things to manage the pain, like drugs and all that. When, if... Their yep. symptoms weren't downplayed from the beginning. Yeah. And they got the treatment that they needed. When they need it, they probably wouldn't resort to using True. street drugs and stuff like that. True. But okay. that's all I got to say about all that. Right, okay. <laughs> so another symptom, Brandy. Anemia. Okay, so anemia means what? Not enough blood, basically. Not enough uh, blood cells, red blood, blood cells. cells. Um, and we see that a lot. We yeah. see that, like, just iron deficiency... Uh -huh. Um, just, you know, chronic illness that mm -hmm. they may have that can cause anemia. So what are some of the symptoms of anemia? Just feeling, most times people are like, I feel so tired. I can't just, move around. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So. Just feel exhausted, mm -hmm. like lightheaded, dizzy, mm -hmm. just don't feel like doing anything. And what we might notice is like they have a, a fast heart rate. Mm -hmm. um, the, their skin color may be pale. Yeah. What mm -hmm. else? What else? They may be a little more irritable. Yeah. For real. Yeah. They may be irritable. Feel so, dizzy yeah. because they're depleted. So what do we do when they have anemia? So what, what would be the treatment for anemia? Depending on the type, um, usually with uh, what What's sickle that? cell anemia, blood transfusion. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And you know, lately, it's crazy because lately I've been having a lot of young females come in with coming in with anemia. Mm -hmm. And a couple of them have to have to go get transfused. Yeah. Like they've been going to get transfused. Well, I, I, what I've realized also is that a lot of them have really heavy periods and mm -hmm. they don't realize, you know, the two okay. kind of go together. Okay. Also, as you can, um, as as you may think. Um, infection. Infection. Like in, you, infection can occur with sickle cell mm -hmm. disease. And this infection, because can occur because sickle cell can damage your spleen. Mm -hmm. And don't our spleen fight off and try to fight off infection in our bodies? It does. So if that spleen gets damaged, you have risk, risk for, for infection. Yep. Infections. So, um, and we're going to talk about more infections, different type of infections, like mm -hmm. it can be pneumonia, can occur, and mm -hmm. other infections can occur. 
But okay. so, so tell them about the acute chest syndrome. All right. So this is life threatening. Um, usually these patients, not usually, they're going to be going to the hospital. Okay. Absolutely. So the symptoms are similar to pneumonia, um, chest pain, mm -hmm. coughing, difficulty breathing, and a fever. And usually treated with oxygen. Mm -hmm. Of course, when you have an infection, you want antibiotics or mm -hmm. something to treat the infection. Mm -hmm. And medicine to keep that airway open also. Yes. And also a blood transfusion. Yep. Okay. And then, so... <laughs> splenic sequestrate <laughs> splenic sequestration oh, I'm glad you said it because you know I wasn't going to be able to say it okay. this can be life threatening as well and so basically what happens is, with this is as we mentioned before the C-shape uh, mm -hmm. blood cells get stuck in the spleen mm -hmm. and cause the spleen to swell Okay. so one important thing for parents to learn is how to assess the spleen so especially with with their kids they can and and usually kids are pretty thin in the waist mm -hmm. and so you can feel the spleen pretty good but they learn to kind of get a good measurement of the size and if it's enlarged straight to the er okay but some of the symptoms that the kid may or whoever may experience is like sudden weakness pale lips fast breathing extreme thirst and of course belly pain on mm -hmm. the left side and usually they have to get a blood transfusion mm -hmm. and stuff to get treated yeah. with okay okay so most of these things oxygen blood transfusion, transfusion fluids, fluids and yeah. pain medicine yeah. yeah yes so another thing is vision loss mm -hmm. in which so all of it's starting to make sense now because the blood vessels in the body are affected and we have blood vessels going to every part of our vital organs right yeah. So if those blood vessels get clogged and blood can't flow, you start to have dysfunctions with those organs. Mm -hmm. So the same thing with the eye. So if the blood vessels to the eye get clogged and you can't get blood there, then you're going to go vision. blind. Yeah, so it's so, so that's how I want you guys to think about it. Yeah. Like it can affect any organ in yep. the body, basically. Mm -hmm. Because the blood is not flowing like it should. That's why they give them the... IV fluids, right, Brandy? Yep, yeah. To get the blood, you know. I'm just, I'm just trying to make it make sense. <laughs> make it make sense. Okay. <laughs> All right. So yeah. So then also there are increased risk of leg ulcers because uh, again mm -hmm. the blood's not flowing like yeah. it should be. Um, strokes, mm -hmm. and you know we've talked about strokes before. Yeah, but it can't get to the brain. What's gonna happen? Part of the artery is gonna get clogged off. The brain won't get the oxygen it needs, and that's basically what a stroke is. Okay. Um, and then. DVTs and pulmonary. What is DVTs? Deep vein thrombosis. So, so what, what, what we call it? A blood clot in the leg. Oh, okay. All <laughs> a blood right. clot in the leg. All right. And then pulmonary embolisms, which okay. is basically a blood clot it in, moves. The, in the lungs. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so, and we, we have videos about all of these. So if you want, you can go back and check and see um, our videos on strokes, blood clots, DVTs. Mm -hmm. We did a whole series. Yes. Um, but yeah. So, so basically, so basically... It can affect, like I said, several organs. Any, almost you know, any organ, organ in, yeah. in the body. Mm -hmm. Anywhere you're getting blood flow to, it can affect. And that's yeah. everywhere, y'all. Yeah. Okay? All right. And then uh, one thing, some other complications that uh, sickle cell disease can cause is malnutrition and growth retardation among adolescents um, and also infertility. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And some men can have problems with it, right? Erect Erection, yeah. dysfunction. Mm -hmm. Pain, they can get painful erections. Okay. Which, if that occurs longer than four hours, you need to go to, to the, the emergency, emergency room, room to get checked. Okay? <laughs> yeah. All it's right. going to be painful, so it's not going to be like a party. All right. All right. And there was one rare disease, kidney disease, that can also be occur in people yeah. with sickle cell disease. It's a rare form of kidney cancer. Cancer, I'm yeah. sorry. Yeah. Correct me, correct Cur me. Kid kidney cancer. Yeah, Why kidney. my tongue so sluggish I today? Know. I can't get my words out. That's okay. That's okay. So treatment options or the cure. There's so a cure. basically, um, you have to get a bone marrow or a stem cell transplant mm -hmm. to get cured. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know of anybody that's had that done. Did the lady from, um, you know, I like Good Morning America. What? So I think, I, I believe that uh, one of the um, anchors on Good Morning America had a bone marrow transplant from her sister. Because usually have to be like a really, really close relative mm -hmm. that has to give you that. Um, like a sister or brother. But I think her sister um, gave her, she had a bone marrow, marrow transplant. And I think she had sick cell. I'm going to do my research, but I really think so. I That's remember that. Yeah. yeah. Well, I'm glad it worked for her. Yeah. Because when I worked at uh, one of the local hospitals. I felt so bad for those people that come in mm -hmm. with sickle cell disease. They'd be in so much pain. And, you know, at that time, 
I wasn't the prescriber, so I just, you know, had to give them what... Whatever the prescriber yeah. prescribed. But I always vouch for them because, you know, I have my whole little spill about it. I ain't going to go back into it. But we'll want disclosure. All right. So just remember that this information is educational information only. It's to um, spark a conversation between you, your family, and your friends. It does not take the place of your primary care provider, period. <laughs> we want you to come and see us or your primary, whoever you go see for your primary yes. care, at least once a year minimum, okay? Yeah. And else? then follow up, you know, as needed. So we say go go see them once a year. She said minimum. That's so minimum. that means you can go more, more than, than once a year. Yeah. Especially if you have chronic illnesses. Yes. If you have chronic illnesses, like I see my patients every three months. Yeah. Unless they're truly controlled. Mm -hmm. I know they're going to follow. Compliant. Comply. You know, we have an agreement. Yeah. It's, it take, it's a team. It's both it of is. us. Yeah. It's not my choice. It's theirs too. Right, exactly. So therefore, um, I try to see them at least three months. On, I may give them six months or a year if they what they're supposed to do yeah what you know but anyways follow us on uh facebook instagram you can subscribe to our youtube channel mm -hmm. if you want to book an appointment uh the community mps.org and we're doing we're seeing virtual patients virtually yes. and we're doing home visits in a dfw area only correct yes so i'll be in louisiana trying to book no home visit <laughs> no not yet not yet okay. unless you're in town no i'm kidding not yet <laughs> But yeah, so that's it. So why do we do this, Brie? Because community, community is, is our beauty. This video is sponsored by Twisted Creations, where we offer signature shirts that express how you feel without you having to say a word. Check out our website at twistedcreations.com.